Well, greetings, everyone. I'm Marissa Smith with the University of Minnesota Alumni Association, and I'm back with another 10 Things in 10 Minutes. And today I am joined by Cheryl Wilson, the Executive Director of the Kansas Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution. Cheryl is featured in our fall 2023 issue of the Minnesota Alumni Magazine. And Cheryl, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. This is an honor. Well, I'm excited to talk to you and learn a little bit more about your journey. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what you do? Okay, so um, as the executive director of KIPCOR, the, which is the acronym, um, I am really running a small nonprofit. So if you think about those folks that you know run a small nonprofit with a staff under 10, that's pretty much what I do. So there's the fundraising, fundraising aspects of the, the work, um, all the ways that I engage our constituent groups, just as any nonprofit would. And then there's the work and the work is around conflict resolution. So we, all of us are, are um, licensed mediators. So we medi we, we do cases where there's mediation involved. One of the, one of the um, niches that we have is that we, are working mostly with families who are, you know, unfortunately there's there's the the divorcing, separating, and never married parents who have to work out a parenting plan for their kids. And it's really important to have people to go through every single detail when it comes to things like that. And so that's kind of our niche in the mediation world, but we also do any other types of mediation that you can think of. Um, and then um, along those lines, we teach courses like college courses um the, so we are housed on the on the on the campus of Bethel College um which is a small Mennonite institution um and um because we are part of the the institution we teach we also um engage as part of the I'm part of the faculty and staff of the college and so there are those affiliated things that we do. And then there's the way that we operate separately to the rest of the world as this, as this institute of our own, where we work throughout the state. We train educators in restorative practices. That's something that is a growing um, way of classroom management. Um, and so we, we hold... Um, probably the, the largest number of, of uh, educators in the state. We, we have been uh, responsible for that. Um, and so it's been thousands of educators that we've been able to impact in several school districts with that throughout the state. Um, beyond that, we operate as a place where um, people come to, uh, in, in our physical space, we have a big training area where people can come and um, we, we have hosted many different engagements uh, where we brought in guest speakers. But as a matter of fact, one of my mentors, um, who is Dr. Mark Umbright, um, who is in the School of Social Work, who just retired recently, he has come and spoken at KIPCOR a few times. Um, so all of that said, we, we are a satellite for the people who come from outside of our bubble. And then we promote um, good communication, um, conflict resolution skills um, as, a, as a training body. Um, and then we also um, have a film series. We have a, a, a peace lecture series. So we bring in special people. We've had everyone... Um, um, a lot of uh, a lot of our contemporaries in the restorative justice field, and we've had some named people, um, uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Um, uh, we've had um, um, uh, John Paul Lederach, um, who is an alum, by the way. And um, we we've just had a lot of different folks who who might be names that people recognize. Um, so all of that said, we we try to be everything that we can think of around peace building, um, and and sometimes that comes in 
very ordered ways. And sometimes people come to us like, we should do this. You guys should have it. What's your opinion? All of those different things. So there's so much that we get to do. Um, and I say we're small staff, but we're small, but mighty. So we do a lot and we have a lot of, we have a lot of contract employees that help undergird our work and success as well. So I'll stop Small but there. mighty for sure. It sounds like an incredibly robust organization and are doing really important work. Uh, yeah. So how did you come to come down this path? How did you come to find your yourself as? Oh wow! As, as so director of the weird thing is, I was not. I was definitely looking to find a place where I could play. You know hang my shingle um, where I wasn't doing a lot of different, like for a long time, I, I, I worked as a contract employee in different ways, doing, doing all sorts of work where my skills were utilized, but it was like what you call a gig life. Mm -hmm. And so um, what was cool about that was I got exposed to a lot of different groups of people. So another hat that I wore for a long time is I worked um, on the board of directors for a national organization on restorative justice, the National Association for Community and Restorative Justice. And so in sitting on their board, um, I was the board president most recently for five years up until December. Um, in that role, I got exposed to a lot of people who do restorative justice work in different places around the country. And I happened to be at a conference and um, a person who had met me at a previous conference said, I've been thinking about you and, you know, I, we have an, a position open for an executive director role and I think you'd be great for that. And I looked at her and I was living in North Carolina at the time. And I said, you live in Kansas, right? <laughs> and I had no, never been to Kansas, never, you know, had a reason <laughs> to come. And I was like, thank you. That is so nice. But no, thank you. I, I like where I live. I'm good. You know, moved on. She, she actually kept pursuing me. And she was so persistent that I sat down with her and I still said no. But it was kind of that thing that was like, what if? And I got back home and I thought about it and talked to a couple of people and I just I put my hat in the ring. I just applied and to, you know, and I think as, as the interview process went on and um, I got here to visit, that was when I could visualize myself in this role. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the day, in my day long interviews, I wanted it. Mm -hmm. I wanted it so mm -hmm. much so that I just kind of, I did something unconventional in the final interview. I said, look, I know that you can call me and reach out to me later, but I just want, if you have any reservations about me whatsoever, say it now, mm -hmm. tell me now while I'm sitting in front of you, because I want this. Mm -hmm. And they took me seriously. And a couple of them shared some of their reservations, but I, I felt like I, I answered them well enough. And the rest, as I say, is history. I got the job. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. What would someone outside of your field find surprising? I was thinking about that. And I think the thing that people get nervous about with people in conflict is that, you know, people can be really nasty. People can be very rude. People can be... Um, you know, probably subject to acts of violence. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I think people would be surprised by is when you do the work. And for me, it's preparation work that I hang, I hang my hat on all the time. If I'm sitting with someone and I hear their story, it's amazing how dialed down they can be once they are facing another person that they may be on the other side of a, you know, conflict with. Mm -hmm. Um, and because they've already had an opportunity to feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And so when people feel that, that takes the air out of the tension so much that a lot of times it's quite civil by the time they actually start to work it out. That's really great to hear and takes a unique skill set, but is also maybe something universal that we could all, a takeaway that we could all find ways to implement in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. 
what was your first job and what did you learn from that experience? <laughs> so my, I had to think about that because I'm old. No, um, I had to think about that. But uh, my my first job was being a gift wrapper um, at a mall in my, my local mall where I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida. Shout out. Um, and I... Um, the governor square mall was, was our big mall. And I got to do like, it was just a short term job over the holidays, like between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But man, you can tell this 15 year old that I was not working hard. And, you know, it was just so exciting to get my first check. And, um, and what I learned is, <laughs> I learned that, you know, you have these little temporary jobs that the money comes and goes so fast. If you don't make a plan, it's as if you never had a job. It's as if it never happened. But I mean, I learned too about the camaraderie of what teamwork does. Like I had to work as part of a team and I had to, you know, you know just learning how to report to people and all of those things, you know, that was, that was super important. And I'm glad I learned it early in life. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a really fun time. I remember. Are you still a good gift wrapper? Oh, I am. Oh, I am that's a great. Good gift wrapper. I can, I can, I can wrap with the best of them. Yes. That's great. Yes. <laughs> What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Well, I was thinking about this in terms of, I, I, I'm a big, I quote people all the time, but um, I, I, I don't know that there was somebody who sat me down that impressed me like that. But the, the advice that I take from a quote is one that I live by. And Maya Angelou says, when people reveal themselves to you the first time, believe them. I live by that. Mm -hmm. I live by that. So I'm watching people when I'm doing a project with them for the first time, or I'm encountering them in the initial meeting. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at ways that they are telling me who they are, whether good or bad. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I try not to be super judgy. I think we all judge, but I mean, I try not to hold things against people, but when people keep showing up a certain way, they're telling you who they are. And, and it's a matter of me deciding how much do I want to invest in this relationship if this person is constantly pushing my appointments off or this person is constantly um, you know, discrediting what I do, you know, it's not like they're going to show up a different way the next time. Mm -hmm. And so I have to decide sometimes whether or not it's worth my time or, or do I cut bait? And then there are people that I have that show up in my life for good reasons that I'm like, okay, they're showing me that they're, they're team Cheryl. And so I, I want to play, you know, so. That's a great reminder. I'm curious to know what is or was one of your favorite campus restaurants or hidden gems. Okay. I'm sure it's a, it's a fan favorite. And I hope it's, I'm pretty sure it's still there. Village Walk. Is Village Walk still there? I can't be the one to on, tell on, you. On West Bank. On West Bank. Uh, it's a, it, 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 <laughs> that was one of my favorite restaurants um, to go to. And, and not just for me getting grub, but for us going out as a family as well. So loved it. I can't be the one to tell you it is, it is no longer there, but it is a favorite uh, and one that's missed by many of us. Many of us. I'm sorry. There's still Shuang Chang and Dinky Chow if you like okay. that one too. I don't even know that one, yeah. but, but Village Walk was my jam. So yeah. Cheryl, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, I just, I just know, um, I thought about it and I was like, God, it's been like over 15 years since I've walked around on campus, been in the space. I, with the exception of going to the state fair last year, I don't think I ever have set foot back on campus for so many, many, many years. So I want to come back and 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 walk around and see some of the improvements and all the places I used to go. Yeah. 
Well, we'd love to see you back on, on campus soon. And, you know, interestingly enough, that's what you just described as a big focus of the fall issue of the magazine where you're featured. It's talking about the future of campus and how, you know, places that hold such rich, important memories for us do evolve and change over time, you know, due to certain realities and how it can still, you know, still find uh, meaning for the students of today. And Cheryl, it was so wonderful to talk to you and learn more about your work at KIPP Corps. Thank you for doing that important work and uh, for taking the time to connect with us today and share your story. Definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you. This has been so fun.